We got a question from Ben. Ben, I have just finished reading the Hardstyle uh, Kettlebell book. Well, thank you. That I wrote that, and very few people read it. And I've added goblet squats with a light kettlebell into my warm-ups. Ben, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, I've been recommending that now for, um, well, a long time, but it's great. I can't believe how much this actually got me warmed up, but also exactly as per your book, my abs felt work the next day. Yeah, so the goblet squat, how, holding it out there, makes it, I call it anaconda strength be, because, you know, it's a stupid name. Uh, actually, the biggest reason is because it got an A in it, and I was talking about, uh, you know, the, the three different kinds of stone strength, and that is armor, arrow, and anaconda, and, and I, I love alliteration. I love alliteration. Oh, that's kind of funny by itself. Um, thanks for that. Separate question. What are your thoughts on training barefoot or with minimal minimalist trainers? You know, Ben, sometimes uh, someone will ask a question and I almost want to laugh out loud. Hold on. Hold on. I'm reaching down and I'm literally untying my shoe. And yes, I know how to tie them too, so don't. Okay. Um, this is not an ad for any shoe, but this is a brand called Witten or Whiten or something like that. But uh, this is a minimal shoe. What I'm looking for in a minimalist shoe is wide here, wide. And I finally found a shoe that was wide, minimal, light. Uh, yeah, I love Vibram Five Fingers, but you know, come on. I mean, adults can't wear, it becomes, the, you know, you show up at a wedding in your tuxedo with your five fingers, you're gonna get slapped by me. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of minimalist shoes. The other thing I like about these shoes is that, so for years I've been traveling, I have this pair of sandals. Uh, my military friends calls them, call them my Jesus sandals or something like that, no? which I always find funny. But the problem with my Jesus sandals, my, uh, and they're great, is they're very thick, they're very heavy. Now, what I bought them for is because they fit just like this, and so they're perfectly flat. But that's all you really can do is go to the beach, go walking on rocks with them. You can't really use them. But what's cool about these uh, minimalist shoes is that they're also flat. But I could, I could easily wear that to uh, on a trip, so I can bring multiple pairs of these. Uh, uh, when I travel, I think it's really important, Ben, to have a pair of shoes that stink. You know, uh, that's why I like the sandals so much because all you got to do is rinse them off with a hose and they and dry them out now sometimes when i travel i don't have the time um one time i was in san diego working with the navy down there in coronado and uh, we we hit the ocean and then 24 hours later i was in ireland and we hit the ocean and that was the coolest thing i've ever done i was on the the western edge of the united states and i was on the western edge of europe uh uh, diving uh, in, in a 24-hour period, which is pretty damn cool. Um, sometimes they don't dry as much, and, and I'm sure those shoes I'm, I, I just showed you might not dry as well either, but I love them for travel, and I love to do walks in them. I like working out with the caveat of this. So if I'm doing a, a general hypertrophy workout, minimalist shoes are good. Here's the thing, though. Early getting ready for an Olympic lifting meet, I like lifting in those flat shoes because it forces my ankles, my hips, and it's going to sound even weird to say this, but my knee flexibility, whatever that means, uh, I have to accommodate with those flats. And then as I get closer to the meet, then I put on my lifting boots with that additional heel. And I really think that helps immense, immensely in my lifting boots right back there. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of it. I like training barefoot. My perfect place to train is on a beach. Everyone shows up with a kettlebell. We all drag the kettle, we all carry the kettlebells out. Uh, we do kettlebell, we do 300 snatches, and then we play in the ocean for an hour. And then we have a half kneeling press contest. We play frisbee. Uh, we, do some, we do some goblet squats and we hit the ocean again. And it's nice if you have plenty of food and beverage. Because, uh, you, you know, as Jerome K. Jerome said, uh, you know, because thirst is a dangerous thing. Uh, I hope that helped, Ben. And it's again, uh, I can't thank you guys for my 100th episode. This is two good questions back to back. In fact, I got to tell you, so far, this 
These are the best questions I've ever had. It's scaring me, folks, because you know what happens when you hit the top. 